My name is Greg Gregson. The kids at school call me Mr G, which is um, one of the sort of an abbreviation that some of the more popular teachers seem to get. And I've been a senior drama teacher here at Summer Heights for nine years now. Coffee, coffee, coffee before we teachy teachy. Always interested in the performing arts, singing, dancing, acting, and mum always says that even as a baby, other babies were crying and and in, in a sort of monotonal way, but if I'd call out to mum rather than mum, like other kids, I would go, mum, you know, instead of mum. I was very, very known for the shows that I'd done there. But I did little mini musicals. We did Starlight Express as a one-man show. I did Cats, which was just a cabaret, one man. Probably the, the one that you might may have even heard of. Um, I did Bubble Wrap, which was me and a couple of other boys. Uh, I would emerge from various types of packaging. Hello. Hello. This is um, Toby, one of our specials from the special education centre that we have here at the school. And it's a separate part of the school down the bottom, but we allow them to play with the with the normal kids at recess and lunch and that sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, so normally I'm not allowed to touch them like this, the students at the school, because of their child protection laws, but we usually turn a blind eye with these ones. You know, this sort of, this sort of thing's fine, that sort of thing, not fine. Fine, not fine. Could I get two strong voices? I have done Lord knows how many shows over the years. I tend to do the, uh, the more modern or cutting edge productions and I write my own stuff, uh, original musicals. I've had a fair bit of critical acclaim for that and this is a um, big show I did last good. year, Sanamarama, which yeah. was about the tsunami tragedy set to the music of Banana Rama. Welcome to Mr G's room, G's room, G's room. Welcome to Mr G's room, come inside. Most of the time it's just chill out with bean bags, pillows, cushions, that sort of thing. And take your shoes off, find a spot on the floor. Welcome to Mr G's room, G's room. My teaching methods are fairly unique. Someone join in. Um, I get pretty experimental and I go crazy sometimes. I just, I just let loose. Enter the room. Oh, thank God you're here. I've, I've been shot. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Boring is not a word that you hear in this room. Spin around, Chinaman. Spin around, spin around. If there's something boring to do, then we find a fun way of doing it. <laughs> and he's dead. Slap the butcher. Slap the butcher is one of the fun games that we play. I'm going to slap you, Emily. I'm going to slap you. It deals with the idea of possession in, in theatre. One thing that I like to do from time to time is I just perform for the kids for a, for a whole lesson, just to give them a sort of benchmark of how things are done. So they can see that someone at, at a professional industry level handles um, the performance side of things. And that, in a way, gives them confidence. There's still a drama syllabus that I have to cover. Most of what I do has a grounding in education. There is a lesson to be learned. One little favour of the principal, can I bring my dog to school and take her to class? And I'm flatly refused. It just The fact that Celine has to spend all her time inside in my office is borderline cruelty. Celine is one of the smartest dogs you will ever meet. Yeah, she's very, very smart. Celine has an oversized brain. Um, She's got one of the largest brains for a dog of her age and species. As you can see, that's how you're meant to hold them. That's the brain, um, just at the front there. Um, we've got her with a dog agency, and she auditioned for a Best and Less ad in, in 2002, and she was, unintentionally, she was in the, um, the Pets Paradise commercial a um, few years ago when I, when I first bought her. She was one of the litter that was in the window, and, um, well, at least I'm pretty sure it was her um, in the window. Mm, you want to go and see Rodney? Mm. Don't touch. Just look. Seven, eight. I'm a dancer from way back. So once a week I pay a visit to the special education centre where I teach special dance. Has anybody seen some dancers? Yeah! I'm here. Dance doesn't discriminate. Virtually anyone can do it. Arms, arms, horsey, horsey, shimmy and up. They have some interesting moves that I've never seen before in normal people. Um, their bodies move in a different way. What I find is that they like a firm hand. They're just, they have everyone, oh, look after the special kids, oh, you better be nice to them or they'll crumble. Pathetic, Cosima, pathetic. <laughs>
I mean, they'll never make it professionally as a dancer, but if you get stuck into them, they seem to respond quite well. Why are we not on the floor, everyone? Oh, yeah. Why are you not down, Jessica? <laughs> Disappointed in you this week. Not good. You have to be very careful when it comes to personal property. I have a uh, I don't touch yours, you don't touch mine policy. The staff, they do tend to borrow um, your, your mugs, your Tupperware containers, and suddenly they become theirs and not yours. And, and you'll have an awkward moment where you say, that's my plunger. And, you know, difficulty arises there. So popping up the poster. I'm also fairly known for my signs. Um, I use signs around the kitchen just to get my message across. Uh, nothing drives me crazier than a messy kitchen. And it's just a little visual reminder and it, it seems to work. Nine this morning, I just went in, I went, I'm director of performing arts, and the, the applause was just unbelievable. Junk, crap, useless. You could use that, couldn't you? The kids are very excited. They couldn't stand Mrs Cotton. I used to say to the kids, how do you deal with it? And, uh, and the kids would say, oh, we hate her, Mr G. She sucks. Feline, don't wipe your bum on the photo of Meredith. Don't wipe your bum on it. Oh, Greg, you're <laughs> terrible. Oh, the staff are really excited too. Everyone's giving me a little, doing a little lap when I walk up the corridor, eyebrow raise thing, when usually they look away. Oh, there's Alana. Alana, have you heard the news? I'm director of performing arts. Spread it round. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's doing his Kermit voice. He always does this when he's excited. No, I don't do my Kermit voice, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got nine years of ideas that have been bottled away. I mean, that's just downright dangerous. That's, well, that could come off and just go straight into a, a student. Well, I've been encouraging Margaret to get onto the department about knocking the, the whole bunch of buildings down to build the Performing Arts Centre for music, dance and drama. Look what he's called it, the Gregson Performing Arts Centre. I don't think we'll be calling it that. That might be going a bit too far. 10,000 seat theatre, so we can put on professional level shows. Um, it's got a fly tower, got time capsule. I'm going to put a time capsule in out the front. 500 space car park, so we'll be encroaching on the oval a little bit, but it'll be worth it, because when we put on shows, we want to be able to get the audience in. My office at the top there, room for secretaries and whatnot, and that sort of thing that I would need. I keep as joking with Greg that uh, I'm going to have myself an office built just over alongside his here and call it the Dramatic Science Office. Well, that won't um, be happening. Yeah, because it's for drama and performing arts only, so you won't be in the building. Finally, I feel as though I'm where I'm supposed to be. Meredith had been trapped for way too long. Try out a new spot. And now I feel as though I've been set free. And I don't have to answer to anyone. The sky's the limit. Move, girls. You should not be blocking the staff car park. Move, or I'll run you down. Move. Thank you, Rodney. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was... When I look at where I am now and I, I think about where I could have been, I, I have to admit I used to feel unsure. But, but these days, I couldn't feel more certain. Drama teaching is where I'm supposed to be. People say drama, oh, it's a, it's a bludge subject, it's a poor face subject, it's, there's no jobs in it. Wrong. Drama changes lives. High five. And, and I have kids that, that come up to me in the playground and they say, oh, Mr G, we're so glad that we got involved in that production. That was the best experience of my life. And I turn around to those kids and I say, cool. The world has gone mad today. It looks bad today. And black's white And I've staff always on at me saying, oh, Greg, don't confuse your role. You're there merely to educate. Wrong again. I'm not there merely to educate. I'm there to inspire them. Thank God you're here. Grandma's been raped. I'm there to teach them the discipline of dance and the craft of the stage. I'm there to teach them to dare to dream. Ben. And to bring into their lives a little bit of magic. Hold it, morons. And release. Finally. Good. Yay. High five. I get no kick from champagne. Take a sip. I've tried to reinterpret the songs and with a modern perspective. I get no kick from champagne. We work well together and I help her out when, you know, if Meredith's feeling lost with anything and, you know, I point out where she might be going wrong. It's a real help. I get a kick out of you, you, you. Make it really aggressive and macho. You, you.